I think the point of today's video is going over fitment. Fitment as well as us showing you guys how to figure out the exact specs on your wheels. Um, this applies to all wheels that are being made. They have to have the stamp behind it. Um, even OEM wheels as well. So back here we have 18 by 10. That's how you know the actual exact size plus the width. And then usually it's going to say either ET or there's going to be a stamp right above it that says a number. So in this case, 25. So it's uh, 18 by 10 and a half plus 25. Now, every single car is a little bit different, of course. So we just need to determine your OEM wheels fitment, which we'll pull off and then we'll look at the size, the width, and then the offset. Uh, there's about 24 millimeters in an inch. Every 24 millimeters is considered one inch. So that's how you kind of determine, like, let's just say it's plus 45 on your stock wheels and then you now have plus 25, you're going to kind of add another additional close to an inch. So we'll just break it down, add it up like that. It's relatively easy. There's actually a online diagrams and as well as like charts that you can actually input numbers and determine like how much you can actually increase on each chassis. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll insert like a little picture right here that shows it. I want to talk about how, so where the hub sits yep. on the wheel that's where your ET is gonna go back and forth. Yeah, so now what does ET stand for? That's a good question. I don't know what it stands for. <laughs> I'll put an ET de uh, definition right here. <laughs> so usually we go by offset. So if it's a 10 inch width, if you have a zero offset, it'll be right in the middle. But this is a plus 25, so it's going to be increased, which is where the hub's going to be sitting, 25 millimeters from the center. Now, if it's negative, it'll go inwards and it's going to push the wheel outwards. Having it plus 25 is going to pull the wheel inwards. Now, the reason why that all comes into play and why it matters is because let's just say you decide to go with a 18 by 11, which is going to be wider than this by an inch, but that's 0.5 here, 0.5 here more. Now, if we do like a plus 25, it sounds like, yeah, you could, but it's only half an, uh, half an inch bigger or one inch bigger, whatever it may be. But you got to measure for the back area where you have suspension or it's going to rub against your frame, things like that. So that's why it has to be perfect to the maximum width that you can increase it to. But at the same time, you don't want it to push out too far where it rubs your fender. So how do people figure that out? Like if they have a car like mine and they've never bought wheels before. On this would be very similar to yours actually. Is this it? Wheel. They're actually, well, competition CSLs. They're very similar to these. Do you want to pull these off and we'll yeah, look we'll at them? Find out right yeah, now. let's do that. What we do is we take off the original wheel. We look at the size, the width, the offset, and then we can kind of add onto that and determine how much more you can go. But at the same time, you gotta calculate for your tire size. Um, I think, so on your wheels right now, 265, 35, 19. And you're going with a 275. To be a 35 sidewall? 35. So it's a little bit taller, but it's also 10 millimeters wider. Another thing that you gotta calculate for too, guys, is tires. Because some tires run wider. I mean, you would know. It'll depend on the name brand too. Exactly. Because each name brand has a different sizing. Yeah. I guess when I ran Michelin's versus Federal, it could be a 275 on both tire, but one could be wider Why? or have a different sidewall. Yep. So there's a lot of things to factor in. So let's pull these off and take a look at the back. There's a lot of things that factor into play. Tire size, you have side wall in general, the width, the brand, and then obviously the size of the rim that you put on it too. Yeah, so for the wheel, it's going to be diameter. So like 18 versus 19 or 17 offset, and then you got width. And then for tires, you have different brands, different width, different height. Yeah. There's a lot of things that come into play. We take off the original wheel, we kind of see, calculate it. So this one is, where is it stamped? In this case, it's gonna say 10J, so it's a little backwards, but 10J, anytime you see J, that's the width. Then by 19. So it's 19 by 10 width, then offset is 25. So it's the same? Same. It's okay. just, this is 19 versus 18. So it's a smaller diameter. Yeah. So these are the 12 millimeter spacer from Apex super good quality, and then also the bolts too. Uh, there's a few things that come into play too, okay guys. Apex is, makes it easy, you just purchase it for BMW, but they also let you know which one's for. They don't list it on here, of course, but when you purchase it online. So this is a 12 millimeter, that's how you know. The bolt pattern on BMWs are, well, previous generation, all the way up until the newest chassis, which is the G chassis. They're five by 120, which is stamped right here. And then this number right here, 72.56 millimeters, that's going to be your hub which is going to be this side of it on your hub. 
Now it has to be perfect because if not, it's not going to be centered and that's what they call hub centric. So they have a little lip here that adds on to replace this current lip. Now the reason why we need that is because I'll show you. It's going to sit perfectly inside your wheel with no movement whatsoever. That's going to keep your wheel centered at all times. So you can purchase cheap spacers online that are hub centric without this lip or it doesn't fit on here properly, it's universal. Sure, it may work, but if you lose this lip right here, there's nothing to center that wheel. So when you reinstall it, you're depending on these lug nuts or bolts to center the wheel. But sometimes it's going to be installed and it might actually be clocked a little different. So just imagine it's trying to straighten it up on one side. And once you tighten up this one bolt, it's going to be very hard because you're going to torque this down to 95 foot pounds. It'll be hard for you to shift this around when something's sandwiched in there. So that's the reason why you want it hub-centric and that assures that you have zero vibration whatsoever. So when you do spacers, you don't, you don't want to cheap out. You do not. You're depending on this spacer to keep the wheel on your car. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> sketchy. <laughs> so you gotta be careful with that. And then yeah. also when you run a spacer, you wanna run an extended bolt. Too. Yes, so we have them both laid out here. Now a lot of guys run, let's just say like a two or three millimeter spacer and they reuse their OEM ones. It doesn't work because sometimes the bolts are too short. Um, the rule of thumb is you wanna have at least five threads turned into there to lock it in properly to ensure that it doesn't break off. But in this case, because we're running a 12 millimeter, you can see the difference. Yeah, it's a major difference. So I'll put it on here so you guys can see it on the wheel as well. The original bolts, if we actually put it inside of the slot, push the bolt through, you can see how much is sticking out. And then I'll put an extended one in there, you'll see the difference. Way more threads that go through. Now put the spacer on there, it goes like this. You can clearly see the difference. <laughs> Makes total sense. That's why you never want to cheap out on spacers. No, I mean you could install it like this, but look how many threads you're depending on Yeah. versus that. Yep, that makes sense. So you can see the difference clearly here that these sidewalls look completely different and also diameter. So this is a 19, that's an 18 right there. This is a 275, that's a 265. 265. And all those numbers pretty much dictate the size of each, I guess, variant for your wheel. So theoretically speaking, because this is a taller sidewall and this is a smaller one, um, the height of it, the rolling diameter of the two wheels should be very similar. So whether this is a 19 or this is 18, that's another thing that comes into factor too, actually, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so you got another thing to factor in too. Yeah, so certain cars that are all-wheel drive, for example, they're very sensitive to rolling diameter. So when you actually throw on different wheels, it's going to throw off the actual rotation that it's reading through ABS. So that can cause a lot of issues. I know GTRs has a lot of issues with that where you start burning the diffs. Well, I remember when I worked for Lambo, people would run staggered setups on Murcielagos and Aventadors, and those cars are all wheel drive. Yeah. So you can really mess up differentials. Hurricanes do. Yeah. Even Hurricanes. Uh, Hurricanes, even if you throw on like a 275 30 on the front, and then you decide to throw on like a 275 35, you will fry your differential. <laughs> <laughs> That's something we don't want to do. Yeah. Thankfully my car's rear wheel drive so we're okay. <laughs> but this hopefully gives you guys a decent taste of how sizing works. It does get confusing, but it took me about a couple years to understand how everything worked. Yeah. But now it's I get it. It's a lot of research. It really is. And I think a lot of people on Facebook groups and forums and shops are willing to share. Yeah. It's just a matter of doing your research. Exactly. We have two ways of installing these guys. Either place it on here and match up the holes or we could place it on the wheels and then place it on together. Um, I prefer to put it on here, match it all up. Dude, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What's up with my calipers? Why uh, did the, the previous guy paint them that color? <laughs> Superman, bro. Superman theme. Wait, maybe Spider-Man? When I got the car, I was like, why are the brake calipers blue and red? Well, that's just temporary until we got some other stuff for it. Yeah, may have a couple things coming. Yeah, one of the few things. You know, what I do is I put this on here, thread it on just to kind of see like it's centered, things like that. So once we install the wheels, it goes right on. So it's good, push it in. Done, grab the wheel, and... Are they labeled for left and right? No, they're all the same. It's not inside it now. But what we're gonna look for is a thread. A tread of it. I think there's another thing too, is there's directional tread, right? Yeah, that's another thing we gotta explain to you. God, that's another, there's so many things about wheels and tires. Certain tires are also directional. Fortunately for you, these are Highlight 4S's. Uh, they, do, they are not directional, they're just inside and out. How we know is, we got the light. We go to, let's go to this one. It's gonna say right here, outside. Inside, outside. If you ever get your tires mounted anywhere, make sure that it's mounted properly. If it says inside on the outside, it's incorrect. And another thing that comes into calculation is certain tires are rotational. So meaning that they only spin one way. So they can only go on one side. It cannot be flipped around. And it'll be labeled on the tire, it'll be right? labeled. So for example, if it is rotational, 
and the arrow's facing this way, that would be mounted on the passenger side. And if the arrows are facing this way on the wheel, it needs to be mounted this way. Because your car is going forward, it's going to be rotating this direction. So you want the arrow to go forward? Yeah, okay. so clockwise, always. But in this case, mine are just Yeah, standard. inside and outside. You can see that 12 millimeter helps push the wheel out a ton. Not a ton, but it's it's pretty flush. One thing I definitely want to go lower, but it looks so sinister. I volunteer. <laughs> This thing's so blacked out. 